Hello, my friends. I'm Kyle. Seriously, blessings to you, and I'm so glad you've tuned in for this Wednesday. Uh, God has spoken to us a couple of different words this year. One is reset, the other one's refresh, and we just came out of a refresh conference, and I really felt that conference was going to, in some ways, set the course for us for the year coming. And we had a wonderful conference. It was amazing. Had several different speakers, but as it happens so many times, there are people who had distractions and couldn't get on and couldn't watch. But I really feel like each speaker had something pertinent to say, and it's things we need to really get in our spirit and hear over and over again. So the, for the next number of weeks, what I'm going to do is replay messages from the Refresh Conference. Now, some of you did not hear some of these messages, and even if you did, you need to hear it again. There's one thing I've learned is hearing the word again and again and again really begins to get it in your spirit and really begins to cause you to be awakened by that word. So I want you to tune into the Refresh Conference. Uh, listen to each speaker, take notes, get it back in your spirit again, and let's get refreshed all over again. This is called a refresh refresher, and uh, boy, you're going to be absolutely blessed by it. So I'll be back after that in the book of Proverbs as we continue to deal with practical things. So enjoy this message on the Refresh Conference. Hey, take it away. Amen. God bless you all from Ghana, Accra, Ghana, West Africa. My name is Apostle Lewis Dickens, and I'm excited to be a part of this year's Refresh 2021 conference. Um, so love Apostle Kyle and, and Kimmy Searcy and honored to be a part of what God is doing and what he's establishing in the earth. Let's just pray in the Holy Spirit and, and just see what God would say. Shondala Barroco Shamandicia. Rako Bobo Sababa Saka, Father, we just invite your angelic presence, Father. Rahalabo Shabarabo Saka Roba Shaka Baba Saka, Father. We just thank you for the full partnership of heaven, Father, in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's pray in the Holy Spirit. Shalamandora Baki Andalabo Sapa Pakunde, Rogaba Shandala Boreki Ambasundele Bishando Rakaba, Rakambasi Atorama Sheba Buraka Basande, Lobrete Seke, wherever you are. In your cars, la braba do shaka mama saka in your homes, wherever you are, kala mashaka babo saka ribibi shaka baba saka. We just release the glory. We invite the glory, Father. We thank you, Father, for your glory, Father. We thank you for it penetrating the atmosphere, Father, wherever we are, wherever people are listening all over the world, Father, we thank you that there should be a tangible glory, Father, that there should be a shift in the atmosphere. Come on, let's just pray in the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes it's difficult to connect with virtual meetings, you know, because you're multitasking and you're doing so many different things, and, and sometimes you have to do that, and so I don't condemn that at all, but I just admonish those of you that are, that, that are free and that can to just to pray in the Holy Spirit and connect with what God is doing, because I believe that God wants to release revelation to us. Yesterday, as I was really praying about um, what the Lord would say um, in this conference, you know, uh, the Lord began to speak to me, and, and, and he began to say something that sounded a bit generic, and, and I want to say this. Um, so that you're aware, it's, this is going to be more like a prophetic message. We're going to deal with several things um, that I believe God is saying that will bring us into a place of refreshing. Amen. And um, one of the things that the Lord said as, as I was just seeking his, his presence and just sort of laying before him, he was like, this is a time of restoration, and um, many times when we look at restoration, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like this, um, this sort of carnal excitement comes upon us because we've already had a picture 
of what restoration looks like. You know, we, we think it, it's, it's going to look like we, we're going to be getting back with, you know, the girlfriend or the boyfriend or, you know, we're going to be moving back to where we came from or we're going to go back to the ministry that we came from. Um, but God began to talk to me about that concept deeper. And, and, and what he began to say is that this is not about going back to what we know, but it is about being restored to our original intent and purpose. And, and, and many of us have not known because, the, you know, 2020 was so stressful and so many things happened and so many things didn't happen. And, you know, we thought we were going left and we went right. And, you know, there was even calamity and sickness. We all were in a place where there was so much happening at one time, you know, as, as we're watching everything. And those of us who are prayerful, we're praying and we're observing and, 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 and all those things that we do. But in the midst of it, there's so much going on that I believe that God, uh, you know, wanted to sort of reel us in so that we could look at what he was actually doing. If you remember at the beginning of last year, the Lord said um, that 2020 would be it. And we I know we're in 21, but but I'm, I'm going to get there. That, but that 2020 would be a season of clarity. It would be a season of visual acuity. Visual acuity means that you would see to the measure in which you were supposed to see. 2020 is a measurement, so you're able to see in the dimensions of 20 by 20. But God has a measurement for all of us, you know, where we're supposed to see to this degree concerning our families. We're supposed to see to this degree concerning our ministries. We're supposed to see to this degree concerning our marriages or whatever the case may be, you you know, and, and so that was that visual acuity. And then the other thing that the Lord said was that we were in a time of calibration. Calibration is also a measurement term. It means that you are moving at the speed that you were measured to move in. So just like a vehicle, if the vehicle says that it is supposed to be uh, 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 moving at 65 miles an hour, then when you check that clock or, or you know, the, and, and then you check it, you calibrate it, then you see that it's actually moving at 55, you know, and then it has to be recalibrated, come on, so that it could come into a place where it's moving at 65. And so when you look at all these words and there were so many different words and, you know, but I'm just mentioning the ones that are relative to what we're talking about is that, you know, all of these words had to do with us seeing and then us being measured to what God was doing. And, and so we heard that, but then as we got into the, the, the midst of 2020, so many things were taking place that we forgot that in the midst of this, things would take place, but we had to rightly see what God wanted us to see. We, had, we could not see what the enemy wanted us to see. We could not see what our flesh wanted us to see. We could not see what people wanted us to see, but we had to see what God wanted us to see and in the midst of that, be calibrated to what he was doing in the midst of it. And, and, and so that was a place that God began to prepare us and so if you begin to look back in that season, whether you saw it or not, God began to reveal things to you and he began to show you the truth that you could not see in 19 and 18. He began to show you the reality at a sharper place. Your eyes were keener. You were able to see at a dimension and a degree that you never seen before because either God removed all the obstacles or he made what you were looking at so demonstrative, so dramatic that you could not miss it. So many people saw the truth of their marriage and they saw the truth of their children and they saw the truth of their finances and they saw the truth of their spiritual condition and, and the truth of their spiritual alignment, you know, and, and, and so many different things because it was a time for us to see. God is bringing us 
into this place of alignment with him, with what we see and how we're calibrated so that we would begin to be able to discern the next moves of God. Listen, this is very important because for us to come into a place of ref a restoration, then we have to understand that there needs to be restoration. And then we have to be in a place of alignment so that we erase all the false images of what we think restoration looks like so that God can bring us into the real deal. Come on. So that God can bring us into a the authentic move that he called us to move into. You know, so that God can bring us into what we were called to do before we were in our mother's womb. This is 2020 was about erasing the facade. It was about removing us out of a place where we were not walking in reality and where we were walking in our own place and not calibrated to what he was doing and to what he was saying. We were moving, so many of us were moving at a pace that was comfortable for us, but it was not in calibration with what God had for us. And so we went through a season where all that we know was torn out of the frame so that we could begin to look deeper than the frame. All that we knew that was our perfect order and our perfect positions and all of this thing was uprooted so that we could go deeper. Let me say something. Even prophetically, some of the things that we believed were challenged in this season. I'm talking about concerning us. I'm talking about concerning vision. I'm talking about, you know, concerning, you know, purpose, concerning destiny. You know, words were challenged and you begin to stand in a place of reality, of your own authentic, authentic reality. And, and, and that, was a, that is a sacred position because it's a position where God can now bring you into restoration. Where God can now bring you into a place where he's aligning you with what he purposed for you in the very beginning. Because many of you, if things were left like they were in 19, you would still be walking outside of the will of God. You would still be walking outside of fulfillment. You would still be walking outside of destiny. Some people are dead men walking because they're just moving according to a program. They're just moving according to what everybody feels that they should be doing. They're just moving according to what was culturally accepted acceptable to do but not really an alignment or calibrated to what God was saying to do. Amen. So prophetically, God's bringing us into a place of real restoration. And in that restoration, he's going to bring us into this place of refreshing. Amen. Because I'm going to be refreshed because I understand this is the place where I was called to be. This is the place where I was born to be. This is a place where it's spiritually natural for me to be. I don't have to force something something here at handable shama i don't have to it's not pressure here you know it's not unrighteous pressure here because i'm forcing myself to fit you know like a square you know in, in a round hole god is bringing you to the place where you fit and it's called restoration into original intent and purpose come on and, and, and in a way that God is bringing us into this restoration is he's causing us to open up to what we were not open to in the last season. Listen, 
I was in the midst of a prayer meeting recently, and as I was praying, and we were all praying about different things, the Lord began to speak to me, and he says, open up the borders. And as I heard him say that, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, open up international borders so that we can get, you know, into other nations with the gospel and all of that because we were in the quarantine season. But God began to speak to me. He says, no, this is not about just, you know, international borders and governmental borders. These are about the borders that are on the inside of you. That many are not able to come in to restoration. Many are not able to be restored to original intent and purpose because there are too many borders and boundaries on the inside of you. Too many things that you've decided, I'll only go that way. I can't go that way. I, I'll only work with this type of person. I'll only go that particular way. I'll only only work with this type of group and God is coming to open up your borders. Listen, because in times of restoration, God restores everything to where it's supposed to be. Listen, when you're talking about restoring, you're talking about everything working. You're talking about everything being accessed. Many of you, only 20% is accessed in you. Some of you, 10% is accessed in you. You. God is coming to access everything if you will come out of the way and allow God to do what he's doing. Listen, you know, um, last year we were in Exodus 14, and I believe we still are. And I want to read this Exodus 14 and 20, you know, as, as we're going into this opening up the borders. You know, it says this. It says, then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and, and all the night the Lord drove back the sea with a strong east wind and he turned it into dry land and the waters were divided. Listen, prophetically speaking, you know, understanding restoration is also understanding division. It's understanding that we're in a time that God is going to separate you from what you don't need in this season. God is going to separate you from what's not real. God is going to separate you from what's not authentic. God is going to separate you from what's not working. God is, God is going to separate you from what's not relevant in this hour so that you can come into the fullness of what he's called and predestined you to walk in. It says that the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind. And I believe that we're in a time that, you know, it's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by his spirit. And I'm telling you, God is causing us to partner with the glory in this season like never before. God is causing us to partner with the winds of God like never before. God is changing the narratives around you. If you will not be, um, if you will not be confined to what's going on, just around you, but if you would allow heaven's reality to become your reality, the glory will tell a new story in your life. God will begin to move in unprecedented ways. I remember there was a time when um, I was, uh, I had come to Ghana and the Lord told me, he says, I want you to take a, a plane from one end of Ghana to the next end of Ghana and I want you to declare these things before the year of Jubilee. And, and we didn't have money, we didn't have resources resources to do that but that's what the Lord said to do and and so one of the members of the team came to me it was a businessman and he said oh Apostle Lewis I think we're going to have to refigure this because you know we, we don't have the resources for this I said listen this is what the Lord said do I said go to the airport and, and check and see what it would be for us to charter a plane from one end to the next, the next. He came back the same day. He said, Apostle Lewis, you won't understand what happened. He said, when I got there, he said, um, the, uh, uh, we had gotten a call from a church in England that you ministered to that said that they owed you money. Come on now. Shaka Mahande. They wired the money at the exact same time, contacted me, and it's the exact same amount of money that's needed for us 
us to charter the plane from one end of Ghana to the next end of Ghana and it was enough left over for us to have dinner that night. Listen, God is changing your perspective. He's changing your outlook. He's changing Masoka. He's giving you another level of insight if you will press into the deeper places of God. This is not the season for us to trust the work of our hand, but this is a season for us to trust God. This is a season for us to trust God's glory and get in the glory. Get in the glory so that God can change your narrative. Listen, this in, in, in these unusual seasons of navigation, you cannot find yourself being completely busy. There must be a time when you take yourself away with the Lord and seek his face because that's when the time when God is going to refresh you and he's going to bring that restoration. He's going to show you, look, at this point of your life, you were supposed to be over here, but I'm placing you over here. And, and, but you're over there, but, but, but I'm getting ready to move you from there, from here. God is bringing us into a place of original intent. Many of you are going to find out that you're supposed to be in another nation. Many of you are going to find out that you're supposed to be connected to somebody that you never thought you'd be connected with. Many of you are going to find out that it's time for a new business because the old business is not, is not um, being able to satisfy or to fulfill what's needed. Amen. Verse 22, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, and there was a wall of water on their left and their right. Listen, we know all last year we went through this Exodus 14. We saw true Passover and true Pentecost and all of this, but all of it was leading up to the crossing of the Red Sea. And, and, and I believe that this is a major piece of where we are. You know, how does that, what does that have to do with opening up borders? It's because the children of Israel were chased by the uh, Pharaoh's army and Egypt up until they got up against a natural border, which was a Red Sea. And at that point, they felt like it was over. At that point, they felt like all that I believe in was not. At that point, they felt like the prophecies were not of God anymore. At that point, it felt like, you know, I've just been pretending this faith is not real. Why? Because they stood up against a natural border. And to them, it looked like death. I'm prophesying to some of you. For some of you, what you're standing up against is a natural, seems like a natural border. It seems like a dead end. But Jesus just like the opening of the Red Sea, God is opening up dead ends and he's making opportunities out of dead ends. This is a time This is a time where God is opening up borders that you've not seen and you've not considered. Listen, I'm prophesying. I'm prophesying. There's a networking that you haven't considered. Rabbi Soraha. There are nations that you have not considered. Come on now. There are spiritual alignments and mentors and fathers that you've not considered. But you've got to allow God to open up the borders on the inside of you so that he can open up the borders on the outside of you. Verse 23, it says, the Egyptians pursued them and all the Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. Listen, we've been in this crossing of a Red Sea place and God's opening up borders. And some of you are seeing the way through. And some of you have had breakthrough. And, and some of you have seen and discerned new things. And you've had new revelations as to what God is doing. But as you're beginning to walk in those waters and to test those waters, it's not easy. Why? Because of the things that are around about you. You have to understand, it was about midnight when they begin to cross the Red Sea. And they cross from midnight to about five something in the morning. Because 
because the word says that the Egyptians were drowned at the first watch would have been 6 a.m. And so, you know, while they're moving through this place, there is walls of water, which would be scary. Let me tell you something. Some of you are walking through places and it seems scary. Some of you are walking through places and it seems inappropriate. Why? Uh, it's according to your cultural standard. It's according to your religious standard. It's according to the way that you navigated in the last season. It looks like you could not go that way and get to where God is saying. But God is opening up new ways. And these ways are going to look strange. And these ways are going to look weird. And I'm telling you, to the religious people, to the intellectual people, it's going to look inappropriate. Halamash because God's not just opening front doors. He's opening side doors. He's Abba. He's knocking out windows. You turn around and he's opened up a wall. He's opened up a garage door. Why? Because he's doing a new thing and it's an unprecedented thing. The crossing of the Red Sea was about God showing himself strong. There's a Hebrew word called shoma, and that word means that his favor and that favor that was ushered to the nations. You must understand, of course we all know that, there was no internet in those days. There was no television. There was no radio, but guess what? The miracle of the Red Sea was so big that it was ushered through the nations. And it's proven. It's been written on caves and all sorts of places all over the world. God's bringing us into a new place. And he is, in, we're in a time, this is what the Lord said to me. I thought it was so interesting. He said that we were in a, a time where there's going to be a great setup. And he says, and, and, and this great setup would be where he would cause it to look like that the enemies have won. And then you will begin to see that they've been rather set up for judgment. Amen. He also said that this was a year of great escape. And just like crossing the Red Sea, listen to this about the borders. Just like crossing the Red Sea, many will escape from one season to another. What does that mean? That means many are in bondage. Many felt like you've been pushed up against a wall. Many felt like you've been stuck. Many felt like you, that you're in a spiritual prison. But God is saying that this is a season of great escape. But get Guess what? You're going to have to recognize where he's taking you. And you're going to have to open up the borders on the inside of you so that you can so that you can submit to him and not resist the new thing that he is doing. Come on now. God is shifting us from one season to another just like the crossing of the Red Sea. Listen, the crossing of the Red Sea See, it was all about purpose. It was all about destiny because they were not predestined to be in Egypt at that point of their life. So for God to bring restoration, he had to shift them from Egypt to Israel. Come on now. And for God to do that, he had to open up their borders. If you look at their talking, they were complaining. It would be better for us to be in Egypt. All of these things that they said, we may not not have said that but many of us have been complaining you know similar things about our own situations in our own culture in our own language but guess what God had to challenge the Egypt that was within them so that they could come out of Egypt. Listen, I'm prophesying to you. For some of you, for God to open up your borders, you got to let Egypt out of you. You got to divorce Egypt. You got to let God purge.
purge Egypt. And Egypt is not just about a job. Egypt is not just about a relationship. But sometimes Egypt can be that thing in your bloodline, Rabbi So, that altar, Rabbi Soko, that generational place in your bloodline that's pulling you back to a place of redundancy, that's pulling you back to a place of stagnation, that's pulling you into a place of bondage. God is coming to take Egypt out of us so that we can fully come out of Egypt. And Egypt is the last season. Listen, there was, a, there, there was an order in Egypt. There was a religion in Egypt. Come on. There was a program in Egypt. There were methods and there were methodologies in Egypt, but guess what? They had to shed Egypt. And I'm telling you, some of them, I don't believe, prophetically did it before they started crossing. Some of them were fearful even before the crossing. But guess what? As they were advancing towards the end of that season, God was stripping off Egypt from them. Because they saw the pillar, Rabbi Shokaba. They saw Rabbi Saka, the ocean standing up. They saw the move of God. Listen to me. Lobramba. God is not just waiting for you to wait till you get on the other side. There's a deliverance now. There's a shedding now. There's a sanctification now. There's a ripping out of the last season now. And I'm telling you, if you hold on to what God is delivering you from, you'll be in error. Why would we be in error? Because I, if, if, if I hold on to that, and that's not what God is doing, then I'll have to fake, I'll have to put scriptures together to justify it. You know, I'll have to tell lies to justify it. I'll have to deceive myself to justify it. I have to do so many things so that I will be comfortable being in a place that God has not put me in. Shana masura bakia raba sota raba. Shama na masaka. 24, during the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud on the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. Listen, I'm prophesying. I'm prophesying. For those of you that think your enemies are overtaking you, I'm prophesying. God is putting your enemies into confusion. Listen, there's a breakthrough right now. There's a refreshing right now. God is bringing your enemies into derision because, as he said, there is a divine set up coming. Mama Shakarabaha Yamasaka. It looked like they advanced. It looked like the witchcraft work. It looked like the lies work. It looked like the manipulation work. But it was all just a setup so that God could set a larger stage for their destruction. I went to Egypt last year and, and when I went there um, the Egyptologist said this. Now, you know, don't quote me. I'm just telling you what the Egyptologist said. They were able to uh, recover the, the, the particular Pharaoh, the particular Ramesses' body, you know, to embalm it. They did everything in their power, but they could not remove all the sand from the Red Sea. Listen, what God is doing is such a setup that generationally, that thousands of years, that historically people will look at the defeat of the enemy concerning you. People will look at the defeat of the enemy concerning your family. People will look at the defeat of the enemy concerning your loved ones and they will be blessed from generations. 25, he jammed the wheels of their chariots so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, here we go. Let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Listen, we're in a time where many things are going on, but you have to know your God. 
And as you know your God, you're going to do great exploits in this hour. God is moving us past everything that we thought we knew and is moving us into a reality of knowing him in a deep way, not knowing him according to seeker-friendly religion or according to what this one has said or what that one has said, but knowing him in the biblical sense, you know, in that he has come into us. He has come into us, and I, I, I know him. You know, old people used to say, you can't make me doubt him because I know too much about him. God is bringing us to that place where, where we will pull from will be our own heritage in the Lord. Shalom akata. Amen. These are some of the things that we can expect you know, in this time when God is opening up our borders, God is bringing unexpected separation. Amen. God is, is bringing ex unexpected death. Death to old paradigms. Death to old relationships. Uh, death to old visions and strategies. Listen, you know, when we're in school and, and, and we have to go to from high school to a college, we don't, you know, we, we don't grieve and, you know, get so angry because we're leaving those teachers you know it's 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 a time of rejoicing because we understand that we've graduated and I'm telling you some of you you have to understand that some people have served their purpose in the last season but now God is graduating you and he's graduating them so that you can come into another place so that he can open up your borders for somebody that looks different that sounds different that has a different dimension that has a different wisdom or knowledge or understanding that can take you into the next place amen and you know and 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 the, the next thing is unexpected alignment God is bringing new business alignments in this season. He's bringing new ministry alignments, and he's bringing new family alignments. I was in a church recently, and I began to prophesy, and, 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 and as I was prophesying, I said, there's somebody here. You think your husband is tall, dark, and handsome, you know, but God said your husband is a Chinese man, and people begin to start laughing, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, when, when church was over, they brought this Chinese uh, uh, a man and he's a worship leader you know and he began to tell his story that he's pursuing this young you know African lady in the church you know but she wasn't interested in him that word of knowledge opened them up they're engaged to be married very soon they immediately fell in love but she was resistant to something that she had never seen before she was resistant to something that was new that was unexpected but when the two connected she realized this is what she was looking for all alone. I mean, the man was in, in, in corporate America. He had saved himself for marriage. He was also a worship leader, I'm telling you. You know, a man walking in purity. God is bringing unexpected alignments. You know, God is bringing unexpected equipping in this time. I mean, people who have been very learned and seasoned in certain areas will have to quickly get mentored, educated, or equipped equipped in new areas. I'm talking to the body of Christ, even the ecclesia. You know, this is a time God wants to give you more. This is a time God wants to put more in your repertoire. This is a time where God is building your portfolio in him. You built your portfolio for the world, but God is shalabaha. You built your uh, 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 portfolio according to the world's standards, but now God wants you to build it according to his standards he has new wisdom. He has new knowledge. He has new revelation. Come on now. He has new relationships. He has new nations. There's more that he's putting under your belt. I'm prophesying to the ecclesia, to the people of God, to the ministers, to the apostles, to the bishops, to those in high places. There is more. There's another, many of you, there's another whole dimension that you've not considered you know you've developed 65 percent of you but there's another whole part of you you know that has not been developed God is coming for what he has not been developed yet that's the only way that he's going to bring you to a place of restoration where you're walking in original intent and not just your 
own. Come on. This is a time where there's going to be unexpected geographical shifts. You know, God's going to shift you wherever he wants you to be shifted. This is a time and a season where God wants you to be movement minded. Shifting from maintenance and continuation of programs to establishing new relevant living movements. Come on now. That move people. That move regions. That move nations, etc. From where they are to where God is. Come on. Movement minded. That's where we're going. For many of you, that's your breakthrough right now. You're coming out of being halamashaka, program minded, into movement minded. What is God saying now? Where, how can he move the people? How can he move my, my region? How can he move my nation? God is bringing us into that new place. These are some of the things that we can expect, you know, as God is opening up our borders and bringing restoration so that he can bring refreshing. We must open up the borders so that God can bring us into the places that he was not and so that God can bring us into the places that we were not. God's bringing us into a greater place of discernment to accurately discern the times of seasons. You know, and lastly, you know, God's bringing us into a place where we will walk in multi-dimensional uh, multi vision. Amen. This is not a season where we can only see one dimensionally. Amen. If we move in just a one-dimensional place in this next season, we're going to be in error. Because there's so much more that God wants to show us. If you've ever went to go get glasses, there's a machine. I don't know the name of it, but there's a machine that they call you to take your glasses out and see through. And, and they start changing these, uh, 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 moving these dials. And as they're moving the dials, they're changing these codes. If you look at it, it, it it's coding. You know, and it's all sorts of marks and all sorts of coding. And so when they get to the right coding, then you're able to see clearly 2020. And I'm telling you, God is bringing you into a place of revelation. He's bringing you into a place of wisdom. He's bringing you into a place of calibration. He's bringing you into a place of restoration so that you will be able to see clearly what he's doing and to see clearly what he's establishing. Listen, there's a coding for you. There's a formula for you. There's a word for you. There's a sound for you. There's a release for you. And God is bringing you into that place to where you'll no longer pretend to be moving in that release or to pretend to be moving in that movement, but you'll come into right alignment with God and he will crack your code and cause you to move in precisely exactly what you are originally intended to walk in. This is a time where God is breaking off the weariness of the frustration of the last season so that he can bring you into a place of true refreshing. And this true refreshing is going to be knowing that I'm exactly where God wants me to be. I'm exactly who, with whom God wants me to be with. I'm going exactly where God wants me to go. I'm seeing exactly what he wants me to see in this season. It's just going to close here in prayer. And, and I just want you to lift your hands because I'm telling you, as, as, as we're praying, as I'm, as I'm talking and as we're praying, I believe that God's bringing you into this new calibration, that he's aligning you. The word of God says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. But when you look at that, um, that, that scripture and look at what holiness means, holiness means to be set apart, and set is a measurement term. You set a clock to the measurement of the sun. It's a measurement term. So literally, without being set to where God is, you won't see him. 
And in 18 and 19, many of us were set to 12 and God was at 2. We're set to 3 and God was at 4. Calibration brings us into that right set. Come on now. It sets us where we need to be. It sets us spiritually where we need to be. It sets us mentally where we need to be so that we can walk in the fullness of what he has. And restoration is all about walking in the fullness of what God called you to originally. 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 But we have to open up. We have to open up the borders, the closed places, the forbidden places, the bolted places, the locked places. Come on. Come on. The condemned places that we never said anybody would go into. We have to open them up so that God can access us for this next place. Because this refreshing is not coming by it's, it's not coming by works. It's not coming by power. It's not coming by might. It's coming by spirit. It's coming by us being led to where he is. And when we get there, he's able to refresh us with healing waters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even now, color my shaka, lift your hands. God is coming to heal you from the last season. Come on now, lift your hands. God is coming to heal you from the frustration of the last season. God is coming to heal you from the grief of the last season. God is coming to heal you from the disappointment of the last season. Come on, lift your hands and lift your mouth to the Lord. There's an outpouring right now. If you'll allow God to, God is coming to pour like a waterfall of his grace. He's coming to pour down upon you right where you are to heal you from the last season so that he can begin to bring full restoration yeah 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 your marriage is coming back to original intent yeah your children are coming back to original intent yeah your finances and your career is coming back to original intent it may take some repositionings it may take some movements it, it, it may take you know some education it may take some adjustment but you're coming back to original intent in this season so, God, we just thank you and we just praise you and we bless you for that. And, Father, I thank you, Father, that you're opening up the, uh, the eyes of our understanding that we would be able to see what we were not able to see, Father, from before. Father, we tap into this visual acuity because we want to see everything that we are supposed to see in this season. Father, and anything that we're looking at wrong, Father, halamashe, expose it for the facade that it is. Anything that is, 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 is presenting itself as a false evidence appearing to be real in this hour. Expel it from our lives. Anyone, Father, that is coming as a wolf in sheep's clothing in this hour, expose them for who they are. Why? Because we have to move in calendar Celebration. We have to move in clarity, Father, Rabasheke, so that you can bring true restoration. Father, we thank you and we bless you, Father, right now. In Jesus' name. Mashera Burra Baba Seke Bebi Samanda Roga Baba Shaka Masotala Basokaba Rememe Sheke. I just see some of you just breathing in and breathing out. As you're breathing in and breathing out, you're releasing the last season, and God is releasing a fresh breath he's releasing fresh breath father into you right now for this new season that's new life being released into you in this season in Jesus name God bless you now there are multiple ways that you can stay connected here at Fresh and Winning House of Worship in new and exciting ways. We have a brand new website and app that just launched. Don't forget to check out fayhow.org and download the Fayhow app. All you have to do is search F-A-H-O-W in your Apple Store or Google Play. It is the perfect way to stay connected and up to date on all things going on at Fresh. 
You can live stream our services, watch previous sermons, and you'll have access to sermon notes and more. There are multiple ways to give here at Fresh and Winning House of Worship. One of those ways is online on our new website, bayhow.org. Just click the Give tab at the top of the homepage. Once there, you will put in your information and verify your phone number. Then you can proceed with your giving. Another way you can give is by texting Fresh Anointing to 77977. You will receive a link that will take you to our Push Pay platform where you can give. We want to encourage you to share this live stream with your friends and family. Also, tell us in the comment section where you're watching from and how this message is impacting you.